We're back in my studio, everybody, and this is not even the coolest part of my outfit. This jacket is the coolest part. Let me see if I can show it off. You see that? Okay, so this is my X-Files jacket, and if you guys are even familiar with who I am, I love the X-Files. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you all. Thank you all for being here today. Guess what? We're going to check out some genetic wash. Hang in there because I've got lots of videos coming. And in fact, I may not jump in front of the camera for every one of them because I just want to kind of pump them out for you guys. So today, though, we are going to focus on Magic Fly Jelly Gouache. Another jelly gouache set, you say? I've had some of them on YouTube. But yes, I did because Magic Fly reached out to me and they wanted me to review a product and I got to choose and I said, you know, let's just... Let's go ahead with the jelly gouache because I haven't seen anybody like do a full review on these. So yay, awesome. And I'm gonna take you through the swatches, tell you like all about like the different colors that are in some of the other sets. And in fact, I was very, very surprised because this is a very thorough set and it's only $20 right now on Amazon. And I was really surprised because a lot of them go for, you know, 30 or more, at least in the, in the 24 sets. I'm also going to take you through the demo of this. I can take you through this, I'm gonna tell you what I think of all of this. So join me on this journey, okay? Let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's do this. So on the back of this box, you will see all of the names of the colors, the light fast information, and the pigment information, which is nice. And they also have a sheet inside, which you will see in just a moment. This box is very, very sturdy. In fact, I had trouble opening it a couple of times and broke a nail. <laughs> so there you go. So along with the paint, uh, you'll find an info sheet inside filled with tips on how to store, use, and make the most out of your paint. I'm actually really impressed by this because it's quite thorough. There's also tips about keeping your gouache from cracking there too, so pretty cool. There's also a protective film along with the, um, the foam cover that a lot of these jelly gouache have. So there's extra protection in this set. I think that's great. So to remove these jelly cups, there's a hole underneath where you'll have to just kind of pop it out and I also thought this was cool that on the side of each color cup there's the name, the pigment, and the light vest information. I thought that was awesome. All right folks here we go. I just took a little crappy brush that I don't use anymore and I took the end of it and just stirred each one. Sometimes these things separate and you can kind of see the binder separating from the pigment and that's no big deal. You know you just like, like I said, you just stir it up and you have a good time. I do like the fact that this is nice and still compact, but we have, instead of 18, we have 24 colors. And that's very, very nice. It still keeps it a little, a little bit travel friendly, but I'm going to make a color chart for you guys so you can see just how nice these colors are. I do believe they're going to be nice and probably the same consistency as some of the other jelly gouache that we've encountered. Let's see here. Acid blue, sap green, lemon yellow, Scarlet red. This is violet. Of course, white. We've got ultramarine. We have this is uh, grass green. We've got mid yellow. We've got uh, scarlet or crimson. I'm sorry, and pale purple. And then we have pearl white, which is kind of this like warm gray color. Um, we have Prussian blue. We have turquoise blue. I believe it'd be nice if these were in order. Um, yellow ochre, orange. Rose, which is completely different from the swatch or with the actual color in the cup. Is that a cat hair? Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get it out right now. Gross. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, we got um, rose. We have gray. We have uh, this is. What is this? Now I'm confused because that's turquoise blue. Oh, I'm sorry. This is turquoise blue. This is viridian. I apologize. Okay, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, light apricot, and black. Okay, and so I see another cat hair in there. That's wonderful. This is what happens whenever you live with animals. I'm so sorry. I wish that there was a Naples yellow because I did have to pull Naples yellow from another uh, jelly wash set that I have in order to create some of the skin tones that I wanted. Because really, you know, you have some some stuff to make skin tones. You've got this nice light light peach color and then we've got burnt sienna burnt umber and yellow ochre and and um, of course you've got scarlet red and lemon yellow and everything but and i know that you can mix naples yellow but i'm i'm i was feeling lazy and i thought it would be really nice if there was just a naples yellow in here but other than that i mean you can see by the swatch the swatches that they're nice and opaque flat colors and you know they're not streaky i always find that the greens 
are a little bit more transparent than others in other sets. So, you know, I'm really not, even with poster paints, like, and that's a whole other video. But uh, for some reason, the greens, I don't know if it's because of the pigments are more translucent or what the deal is, but they often seem to be a little bit less opaque than the rest. You've got a nice balance here. I think there's probably more blues than there are maybe reds and oranges, but you've got like two reds, two oranges, a yellow, a lemon yellow. You've got, you know, you've got your standard ultramarine and Prussian blue. You've got, you know, kind of these extra colors that are kind of nice and skin tones. And then you've got your nice gray. I think this is a nice addition, this pearl white, because it's, it, it's not quite zinc white, but it does neutralize colors if you need to have them neutralized and you don't want them as bright. So that's kind of nice. And then I, I used some of these colors to mix, and, except for this one, this was Naples yellow. In order to save time, I decided to do a voiceover for this part. And I decided to do a comparison chart with both the popular Hemi 18 gouache set and the 56 color set to the Magic Fly to look for duplicates. And so the following colors will appear on the screen that are the duplicates in the chart. The left columns are Magic Fly and the right columns are Hemi. I did also want to mention that the brushes that they sent, I did actually use in the painting and they're great. I don't think that you have to have super fancy brushes in order to make your gouache work. In fact, gouache is kind of hard on um, most brushes. So usually I will just, you know, buy some cheaper brushes and use them. So these actually are even better than the cheap brushes that I have. So there you go. Um, I really liked the filbert especially. So we have here, we have the, sorry about this. I'm so sorry. I'm messy. I'm a messy artist. This nice little legend down here, it, it tells you the light fastness. Obviously it tells you the transparency and it tells you the pigment number. And I think that's fantastic because there are some on the market that don't have pigment numbers. They don't tell you how light fast they are. So kudos to Magic Fly for doing that. That's awesome. They have great customer service too. It tells you all the information that you need to know down here if there's any problems with your product. But you have 16 colors that are uh, light fastness with three stars, three out of three. So awesome, right? I think that they have really, really put together a nice comprehensive set, not only in the colors, but the way they're very thorough with how they presented it. Real briefly, I want to kind of show you the inspiration for what this painting was for, like the, the style. And holy crap, you guys, you know, I wish I could take you through a whole flip through of this magazine or this book. Sorry, they come from magazines. It's uh, illustrations from magazines from the 1960s. And, um, I've really, really found that I love some of the artists in here because I, they credit everybody that they can. It looks like, it almost looks like they used gouache here. I'm sure a lot of these illustrators used gouache because the magazine industry was really booming in the 60s. And especially with uh, like teen and women magazines, women's magazines, um, they were just really wanting to pump out all of those illustrations. And so instead of using oil, they kind of switched to gouache. So you can see that it's not necessarily the most... Um, complex variety of shadows and light, but it works. It just works. I just love the style of it. It's something that you don't see a lot anymore, the style. And unfortunately, a lot of these artists went uncredited. Like this to me, like the, the shadows and light here are just brilliant. I really love it. See the reflection, this reflective light on her face. She looks like she's in distress. I really feel like these illustrators were kind of the masters of illustration. Um, from that era because they had to not only capture, they were storytellers within their paintings. They had to tell a story, they had to make that style work, and they also had to capture em emotion in those photos and those illustrations. So for this portrait of the lovely Sharon Tate, I had to actually colorize it in my work. So first I made what I call a value sketch. It's similar to trace and transfer, but you shade in the values first in order to simply break down the shadows and light so I can stay focused on the general. And so at first I decided to take Schmincke quinacridone gold and use it as an underpainting. So I want to apologize because there is a bit of a jump in this time lapse due to me knocking the camera angle at some point and I completely lost the angle of me painting. So brilliant, I know. And this part does go in and out of focus just for a few moments while I'm painting in the definitive shadows first, because that's what I like to do. I promise it does get better and my head does get out of the way. I promise. <laughs>
want to say that while we're, there are parts that I struggled with here, the quality of the paints were enjoyable and they performed very well. I know that I've done a lot of reviews and just because a company sends me a product to review does not warrant a guaranteed positive review because I always want to be honest with you guys first. And if there's something that isn't worth your money, I'm going to let you know. So thankfully, I haven't run into too many bad art supplies over the years though. Um, I ended up using a lot of the white and I don't think that's necessarily on, you know, the fault of the actual product because I did use a lot for the pastels in this piece. So just keep that in mind whenever you see this, especially with the background. I used a lot of white for the background to mix the color that I wanted. The gouache is, is very, very um, on par with the other jelly gouache that is on the market, but I found that it was really, really easy to work with. It wasn't difficult and and it you know the only time that i had difficulties were because of my lack of skills <laughs> and so you know there would be times whenever i was working on her and i know that like some of the other layers were starting to lift and then i had to pull back and like remind myself or change the consistency so that is part of the practice this whole part of the process okay so looking at the finished piece first off i really like how it turned out overall i really am pleased you know, from far away, it looks a lot better. <laughs> and I don't know if those of you who are watching that are more experienced with gouache, if you have any tips, please leave them in the comments below because it's hard to really find a lot of good references towards portrait painting and realism with gouache. Sometimes, you know, there were times whenever I really kind of, I feel like I overworked her face in certain places. I really had trouble trying to colorize this picture because it was originally black and white. There was no color version of it. So I was kind of going in blind. I got to figure out how you seal gouache paint. So if you guys have any suggestions, please leave them below too as well. I feel like Sharon really, I feel like she needs to be known for her, for her talent, not so much for how she was, um, how her life ended. And if you don't know what happened to her, you can Google it and it's pretty, pretty terrible. But um, I really, I kind of felt sorry for her and I didn't even realize how young she was. Like I was like, holy crap, she was 26, 26. She wasn't even in her thirties. It's just crazy. So um, God bless her. And you know, I hope she has found peace in the afterlife and in the next, her next place in the journey. So I kind of wanted to kind of capture that sort of ethereal quality to some of these illustrations. And so, yeah, hopefully I did that. Hopefully I, I created something that was of that style and I really enjoy that style. So what you think of the final result here? She's probably glowing because these lights are so bright. Um, I worked at it pretty hard because there were times when I was painting with it and unlike other mediums that I'm familiar with, there were times that I reached, I thought, what am I doing? This is, in my mind it works, but whenever I execute it, it's not. <laughs> so, um, you know, I had to kind of stop and reevaluate, slow down a little bit, but ultimately I'm happy with the result and I definitely will continue to use gouache and feature gouache on this channel. I think this is a fantastic steal. I mean, it's 20 bucks. You can't go wrong with this. And it's it's actually like more lightweight than some of the other jelly wash uh, containers that I have. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with this set. And I appreciate it. Thank you to Magicfly for sending it to me to review. It's, it's still 2020 kind of bled into 2021. And the best that we can do is just to be there for each other and have a good time. Make sure that like you make space for yourself. That's something that I have to do myself, even create off camera and enjoy myself and enjoy my work. So, and the whole process to enjoy the process. So I'm gonna stop rambling. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, keep creating everybody. Show everybody how pretty you are. Come here. Say hello. Say hello. To oh yeah, you're the good boy. Yes, you were. He doesn't like to be held very much.
Have you ever painted something and then realized that there's this tiny little hair inside of the painting? <sighs> okay. Prussian blue, turquoise blue. We have, okay, these aren't in order. Uh, <laughs> thanks, okay. so hot it like hit my ribs. Ooh. That's, you know, that's when you know it's good. 